And welcome one and all to the comic multiverse where the worlds of nerd meet. I don't know why I am shattering this one. It's as though <laughs> we've done 51 of these, Matt, and I have to do something to keep it interesting. <laughs> uh, the Shatner voice. You know, you know, I found out the other day that I actually share my birthday with William Shatner. No shit, really. Yeah, people were like saying happy birthday to him on the same day I was, so obviously oh. it's his birthday is the same day as mine. You were born under the same star as Captain Kirk. <laughs> sink, sink that one in, Matt. I was born apparently on the same day as Will Ferrell. Hasn't done anything for me. <laughs> you, you, you get to be really funny, though, and, and own soccer teams and whatnot. Is that true? Does he actually own a soccer team? I think he has, like... like a partial stake in one. I'm not sure which one. Oh, I know he, like, loves soccer. I guess he did make that soccer movie, didn't he? So that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm. We're, uh, we're recording this at the same time as WrestleMania, so my Twitter is blowing up with people asking me if I'm watching it. No, I need to work. Comic Multiverse comes first. I'll watch it later. <laughs> You see, Matt, we need to watch it because that guy, Kevin Owens, who everyone says we look like, looks like an amalgamation of us two, our love child. He's uh, he's in one of the main events tonight. Oh, hopefully he wins. I hope so, too, because a victory for him is really a victory for you and me, Matt. Our, <laughs> our love child going on, taking over the world. <laughs> I love that he's a Canadian and he's fighting tonight for the U.S. title against another Canadian. I'm like, there you go. That's that's the world we live in right now. <laughs> Canadians fighting for America. <laughs> yeah, Canada will show us the way in time. <laughs> now, uh, now you had a bit of a busy week this week, Matt. You actually uh, hit a couple milestones and did some stuff you haven't done before. How about you tell everyone about that? I did. Uh, well, first I hit two, just yesterday night. I hit 2,000 on my... YouTube channel mm -hmm. so thank you everyone for that that was pretty cool uh, I didn't really expect to be getting that far <laughs> um, and I I just recently made an Instagram account after I know weeks of trying and <laughs> it not letting me and you, you know what the fucked up thing is I tried the original username I wanted and it worked really what was uh, which one was Whereas, that uh, it is. I shall tell you. I actually forgot, but I'll tell you. It's <laughs> you should my... remember it so you can pimp it out. I <laughs> just keep Joel on everything. I, I'm trying to. I'm getting used to using it because I've never used it before. So. It's harder than it seems. Am I right? Yeah, it it is really weird. But I'm glad that I've got like a, an app on my phone for it. So that's good. Um, my username is Matt underscore F O S nineteen thirty eight. Right. Oh, I get it. Fortress of Solitude. Yep. There you go. Good good stuff. So yeah, everyone who hasn't been following Matt yet, go follow Matt on that. I'm sure he would like that. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to post on there. <laughs> uh, I post pictures of my food and they do better than pretty much uh, pretty much anything that anything comic related <laughs> I ever put up there. Uh, funny pictures of me doing stuff when I'm out. That's basically how you win at the Instagram game. Yeah, okay. And then I, I got to put like a um was that a filter on it, don't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People people love the fun <laughs> filters. You get a fun filter in, you get enough people following you, you tag it just right that eventually companies will want you to put stuff in the background of your uh, Instagram posts. <laughs> so so soon you'll see me standing in front of like a Coke sign or something there and just go. it'll just always be there. <laughs> get Mountain Dew and Doritos. You didn't know it, but you know, Matt lives with a big statue of Mountain Dew and Doritos. <laughs> He just lives the extreme life all day, every day. <laughs> you know what they really need? You know what kind of sponsorship I really want? Some of that Mulan dipping sauce. That's what I want. <laughs> the Szechuan sauce? <laughs> the special Szechuan sauce from McDonald's. That's our new thing, Matt, moving forward for the comic multiverse. That's what we want. We are taking it upon ourselves to make sure that that sauce comes back. Even if it takes nine seasons, Even he's going to get that sauce. Even if it takes nine seasons of the comic multiverse, which, shit, this is our 51st episode. How many seasons would that be in a regular show, you think? Well, it depends. If we're talking, like, regular TV, that's, like, two. If we're talking, like, anime, that's, like, quarter of a season. If you're lucky. <laughs> I mean, I mean, all the good shows are 26 episodes. That's what Bebop was, right? Bebop was 26? I think so. There you go. That's my rule. All the good shows are 26. 
<laughs> so we have two shows, two seasons now. <laughs> I, I mean, for most animated shows, I mean, I think Young Justice, before it got canceled, ended up being 26, and I think Spectacular Spider-Man ended up being 26. Cool. We really should have stopped after 26, Matt, is what we should have done. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't get better than 26. No, we're at staying our welcome. We are overstaying our welcome. We're in that weird third season of South Park that the creators disown. <laughs> and refuse to do commentary on and refuse to talk about because they didn't actually have much input on it. <laughs> that's that's where we're at now. That's where we live. You know where else we live, Matt? We yeah. live in the second trailer for Spider-Man Homecoming. This is this is what passes for segues now. <laughs> it's, it's the segue car crash. <laughs> yeah, is it ever? But fuck it, we're going to talk about Spider-Man, damn it, because it matters. Spider-Man Homecoming, second trailer. I saw it. Did you see it? What would you think about it? Let's talk about it. It's a show. It's what we do. <laughs> I, I, I like that. I do admit that it did show a little bit too much. You think so? I... I, there were certain aspects in there that I didn't think it should should have shown. Like? Like the vulture holding Iron Man's helmet. Mm. How'd he get that? Mm. See, I, I know, must not have been paying close enough attention. Yeah, st stuff like, little things like that. But overall, it was a really cool trailer. I liked yeah. it. I I'm glad you mentioned Iron Man, because it looks like he's going to be playing a huge part in this movie as Tony's, or sorry, as Peter's mentor, and basically surrogate superhero father, it would seem. Yeah, well, um, I think I think it was either the director or, or Kevin Feige explained it that that Peter's been in this world while like the Avengers have been around. Like I think they they said like he was five years old when the Avengers first came about, and and he's been like following them. So he's kind of seen Iron Man as his father, right? And it makes sense that he'd be in this movie and looking up to him and everything. And that's kind of what they're doing here. And it was really great because they had that bit of character development from Iron Man 3 where T Tony realized it's not always about the suit. Yeah. It's about the person under it and everything. A lesson I thought that was really now, great. Yeah, a lesson he is now trying to teach Peter. And it's fun that they kind of get a back-to-basics spider-man first movie origin story without really doing an origin story where he's got to kind of earn the right to wear the costume again yeah yeah and in doing so he goes back to his old costume which is kind of ben riley ish yes it really is ben riley ish isn't it what with the uh, the sleevelessness of the outfit yeah it's kind of a have your cake and eat it to approach which i like yeah it, lo it looks really cool Mm -hmm. And you've got the eye things, those those like um, camera shutters, yeah, I, the eyes. I'm really excited to see what they're doing with Michael Keaton. He actually seems to be a really threatening version of the Vulture, which is something I never thought I would say. Yeah. For, from what I understand, it actually involves um, damage control, the the team damage control. And apparently like he, he's like some blue-collar worker who was like, uh, I think he was like a like a scrapper or something, like someone who'd like go clean up like the events of like New mm. the Battle of New York and stuff like that. Mm. But then Tony Stark started the damage control team to sort of clean all that up and him pay for it and everything. So it put the Vulture out of work. Interesting. Vult Vulture's not very happy. Hmm, interesting. That's pretty cool. Yeah, tying it back into the incident and tying it back into the whole heroes' actions have ripple effects thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, not bad. So yeah, that Spider-Man Homecoming looks pretty freaking cool. I mean, I'm sure it will be super, super huge. Actually, you know, while we're on the subject of Spider-Man, uh, this wasn't a topic, but we should talk about it. What's what's this rumor shooting around now that uh, Sony is apparently planning to make more Spider-Man movies now that aren't connected to it, but they're going to oh. use what? what? What's going on with that? S Sony's gone, gone insane, as usual. <laughs> Again. Um, and I... I think it's directly responsible for, like, Logan being as successful as it was, like, the R-rated thing. And I, I made a video about this saying that this was going to happen. It was be one of the studios that do it. And I think they're planning on making, like, an R-rated Venom film. Yes, yes. Or something that, that has nothing to do with Spider-Man. Completely unrelated. And the Silver no Sable sense. Black Cat thing we talked about as well. Yeah, which I think, again, as I think I said last week, might be that glass ceiling script they had kicking around. Right, huh. It seems weird, Sony. It seems like they just couldn't be happy 
what is it, uh, splitting the profits and splitting the success with Disney Marvel. They want their own thing now, even if it ends up confusing a lot of people. Yeah, and it probably will. It will. And I, I bet, I bet you anything they'll make like marketing and stuff for it look like Spider-Man. Just to mess with people? Yeah. It's It seems like such a weird choice. Why, why would you work so hard to implement Peter Parker spider-man into this avengers universe and then muddy the waters by being like oh well maybe we're gonna do our own thing maybe we're gonna do our own spider-man thing yeah again they they need something successful because they're like hemorrhaging money at the moment apparently yeah very 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 weird i mean i guess we'll talk more about that as become apparent. Uh, i would think right now no one really knows anything it's all kind of up in the air at the moment yeah uh, all right, so moving on from Spider-Man to Batman, we got some big news. In fact, we were talking about this last night, Matt, when we were recording Cape TV. We wanted to be sure that uh, we had it all in order so this news could come out. We could talk about it. But uh, Greg Capullo and Scott Snyder, the new 52 Batman Dream Team, are getting back together for a brand new project. And it's going to be tied into that whole Dark Days Batman event. And the book that they're going to be working on is called uh, Batman Dark Days Metal. Yeah, we, we got some out of it and didn't really reveal much. And in the panel, they didn't reveal much either, more than no more than what we've already known. Like it's going to be some event that they've alluded to in like, I think, Batman issue 50 and, and through like Court of Owls and stuff like that. But other than that, we don't know what it's about. Yeah, although, well, actually, we le- we know, we heard a little of it, apparently, when they uh, dug deeper on the metal that this whole story revolves around, and indeed, the books we've had it out so far, the metal, the forged, and the casting, which are all references to smelting, if you know anything about smelting like I do, apparently. <laughs> uh, this <laughs> this metal in question is nth metal, is what they're talking about. Oh, damn, I was right. <laughs> Yeah, 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 you pretty much nailed it on your first go, Matt, because it's like, hey, DC Metal, what else is it going to be? I don't think Batman has worked very much with Nth Metal, so it's kind of interesting that they build a big Batman story around that. Yeah, I, I'm wondering, though, if they're going to actually end up tying that into that Death of Hawkman story, because that was all about Nth Metal as well. Yeah, as most Hawkman stories are. Yeah, and... That, that included the villain Despero, who turned his body into Nth Metal, mm-hmm. so, and he survived at the end of it, so maybe. I wonder. It gets even crazier because, you know, uh, Snyder and Capullo have said that they've been working on this story for a very long time, dropping references, and uh, they say that, you know, e- even in all their other stories, in Court of Owl, in, you know, uh, Death of the Family, they've dropped references to this to what they're going to be doing and now i'm dying to know what were those references and how's it all going to tie together yeah i kind of want to go back through these and just sort of like scared just see like what he was talking about what he could have been talking about well from what i've seen you know this seems to involve some sort of dark future and i'm sure i mentioned it on another episode too every so often in that batman book by snyder you would take weird trips to the future for a second yeah but not yeah really yeah, know yeah. What any of it meant yeah he had those two uh sidekicks didn't he i can't remember what they were named yeah there was some stuff with like a batman clone in future's end there was like some weird road warrior batman stuff happening if i had to guess that's what it's about yeah i i, I don't know what what exactly the story would be i know uh, Snyder said that it would still retain that sort of fun and hopefulness that Rebirth is doing at the moment. Yeah, like, it yeah. wouldn't be, like, dark and gritty and whatnot. It'd still retain all that. So, I I have no idea. And, hey, more power to them, because, you know, so far, uh, the DC events have been killing it as of recently. Oh, they've been fantastic. Yeah, they haven't had a bad one yet, from Reborn to the button we got coming up to even uh, Night of the Monster Man... And uh, I feel like I'm forgetting one. Oh, uh, Suicide Squad Justice League. Yeah, that one was really great. That one was really great. That one was way more solid than it should have been. Yeah. Like, you think something with verses in its title is going to be lame, but it wasn't. It was to the point, it was good, and it came out on time. That's the other thing about these events. (laughs) Not only are they good, but they're continually coming out on time. (laughs) That's nice, Matt. Isn't, Isn't it nice when books come out on time? It is. You can set your watch by them. Keep uh, keep that in the back of your head, too, because I imagine the big marquee conversation we're going to have this week will relate to that. Yep. 
So, uh, from one Batman story to another Bat-related story, apparently Joss Whedon might be in talks or might be being courted for a Batgirl movie. Say what? This this is really weird. <laughs> it is weird, but it also kind of makes sense because we talked a while back that one of the Lego movie guys apparently got tapped to do a Nightwing movie. Now we're in talks for a possible Batgirl movie. I guess they're trying to build the Bat family in cinematic form now. Oh, the Batman cinematic universe. <laughs> yeah, screw, screw the DC movies, guys. It's just going to be all Batman all the time. <laughs> Which... Now, the, the, the thing is, I heard this movie might be um, uh, standalone from the DCEU. Uh-huh. Man, I, I, I've been trying to find out where I heard that, but I'm sure I saw the word standalone. Is it one of those things where it's like, it's standalone until we decide we like it, then we're going to fold it in? Possibly, yeah. I could definitely see them doing that with the Batgirl film. Because they've made no reference to Barbara Gordon in the any of the other DC movies we've seen so far. Heck, they made no reference to Gordon except for in that Justice League trailer. They made no real reference to any of the Robins, except for maybe the costume, which may have been a delusion of Batman anyway. We don't know, and looks like it was added in post, so who the fuck knows? Yeah, and all, like, Burnside and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, she's in Burnside now, but, I mean, still. it's, it's Well, I think, strange. weren't they going to tap the New 52 run of Batgirl for this? The Gail I Simone run. That I heard that, too. Which, if they did any run, yeah, that's definitely the run you do because it's, you know, very self-contained. A lot of new original great villains. Strong characterization for Barbara that essentially takes place after the events of Killing Joe, keeping that canon, but having her life go the completely different way where she eventually did start walking again. Oh, so does that mean we're going to get, like, flashes to events we haven't seen in film yet and be we say this is coming up in this film? Probably. In- 17 years probably i mean heck if you give Zack snyder and those guys you know his team the chance to reference a story like killing joke of course they'd want to try yeah the the good thing though about this is that it, it might be like the sign that maybe like snyder and all his people are starting to be phased out we can only hope I, I hope. Yeah, I hope so. Because I, I can't imagine Josh Sweden getting along with Zack Snyder. <laughs> no, no. Didn't, didn't Whedon have like a bunch of Wonder Woman pitches and a bunch of Wonder Woman scripts that they sat on and didn't do anything with? Yeah, he pitched a Wonder Woman film and yeah, I think they got kind of close and then they're like, nah, no one will believe this. I mean, if they did manage to, like, you know, meet Whedon's criteria and actually get him on board with a project, that would be, like, the steal of a century, wouldn't it? It's like, hey, the guy who gave you the first two Avengers, oh, we got him working for us now. Well, it's funny, because they're, they're, they're already saying that, like, oh, they stole him from Marvel, and it's like, but he hasn't worked for Marvel for a number of years now, since yeah. Age of Ultron came yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, he, he left. There was an amicable split there going on, but it would be funny to see them grab him for another superhero project. Although I imagine what he learned on Avengers, he would probably want things to be really different. He'd probably want them to be his way or the highway. Yeah. I'd want I'd really want him to do a Superman film. Yeah, that would be he seems to be the perfect guy for it and he won't get to do it maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I I'd really like to see him do that. They would that that's like that's like one of those ideas it's too good to be true. Yeah. Especially with DC. Yeah. I mean, I would love a Batgirl movie. I would love to have the sidekicks, you know, kind of take center stage and everything. I love I love me some Nightwing stories. I love me some Barbara Gordon Batgirl stories. But it might be a little too late for this DC universe as it is. You can't go from having no sidekicks and no legacy to trying to, like, put it in artificially after the fact. Yeah, no, what I think is it's just weird how they've how they're going about like which movies they pick they're really strange they are like like we have like a superman film then a batman versus superman film then a suicide squad film then a wonder woman film then a justice league film then, then an Aqu- like city it's, siren it's so fucking weird that the way they're doing things over there they are throwing things at the wall and seeing if they stick yeah they're like, well, we tried all our big marquee teams. We tried being a little different, a little outside the box. Well, people seem to like Batman, so let's just not stray far from Gotham and Batman, I guess. Yeah. Surely we'll find this winning formula eventually. <laughs> 
I mean, hey, if you can say nothing else for DC and Warner Brothers, at least they don't give up. At least they are tenacious. Well, that's the thing. Maybe they should and just take a step back and, and look at what they're doing. <laughs> no, you can't stop stopping, Matt. You got to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 but guys, maybe you'll make the fire a little worse if you just said, no, 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 we're going to keep pouring gas on this fire until it works. <laughs> we're going to get this going eventually, even if we got to burn down the whole neighborhood, we will make this work. <laughs> well, you know, you got to hand it to them. They have a real never-say-die attitude. They just keep going with it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I I hope Whedon gets it. I definitely hope they do adapt some stuff from the Gail Simone New 52 run, because I was, of course, a huge fan of that. In fact, I'm not afraid to say there were weeks where I liked that one more than the Scott Snyder Batman, or at least weeks where I thought they were on very similar footing. Cool. So, I mean, that's, that's definitely a way to get Joel on board. Now, moving away from the world of DC Comics to the world of Marvel Comics, this week was the Marvel Retailer Summit, where they basically get together with all the stores, Diamond Distribution and everything, and they have, like, a conference. The stores can talk to them, they can talk to the stores, and, oh, man, did a lot of shit come out of this. A lot of, like, you know, nitty-gritty business stuff that I don't usually like to address because I'm a hippy-dippy comics or art type of person. But man, was it hard to ignore a lot of the stuff that came out from this. There was there was some ugly stuff that came out of this. Basically, they came out and said, yeah, artists don't matter. That's why we haven't made a superstar artist in forever. Uh, people will buy $10 comics if we tell them to buy $10 comics because we're a niche market and because people have to collect everything. Uh, you, you might not like big crossover events, but they do sell more, so that's why we're going to keep doing them. And I'm like, please, please stop. And then the cherry on the cake was them basically coming out and saying, uh, yeah, diversity failed and it's your fault it failed, so we're not going to do that anymore. Uh, I, 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 I was watching all this happen live and I just could not stop laughing. Why are you doing this, Marvel? Why are you putting your foot in your mouth so hard? Oh my <laughs> god, everything you said is horrifying. It is. I just, I could not believe how out of touch they were. They're really lost, and it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's all those problems you mentioned. It has nothing to do with the fact that you keep renumbering your comics so no one can keep track. You know, it's not the problem that you don't keep track of digital or trade sales because you just don't seem to care about those because, you know, you got to keep a symbiotic relationship with the brick-and-mortar stores, even though, as cruel as it is to say, who buys physical anymore? The comic book shop is dying. They have to do so many other things just to supplement their income. Yeah, and, you know, they, they, they don't put stuff out on time. Yeah, that's the thing, too. As we mentioned, you're late with your events. You spoil the end of your events. Yeah. <sighs> Maybe it's all these other issues. I mean, like, this was such a topsy-turvy week. I found myself agreeing with Rob Liefeld and Eric Larson on social media <laughs> when they said, man, Marvel ain't cared about making superstar artists since back in our day, man. That's why we all left and formed Image. And I'm like, oh my God, I agree with them. <laughs> it's so true and it's so sad and it's so fucked up. If there was one good thing that came out of this is that a bunch of different, you know, Marvel artists and writers, either past, present or future, weren't afraid to come out on social media and their blogs and everything else and be like, and you know what, and this is why this is bullshit. Yeah, yeah, I saw a lot of them. I think I know um, Nick Spencer was up there as well. Oh, yes, yeah. Nick Spencer had a lot to say. I would say go read his feed. Kelly Sue DeConnick had some interesting stuff. She talked about uh, her and another artist who worked on the Captain Marvel and Miss Marvel books was like, hey, you know what? Yeah, we had no, uh, like, help on this one. We had no... Uh, marketing behind it but we made this book work anyway just out of sheer passion and just you know sheer fans wanting to check it out we had no merchandise push i think kelly sue DeConnick said you know i i made my own carol merchandise and sold it at cons and you know i i kind of made it into a thing myself but do i get any credit for that nah no 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 it's it's it's, it's really messed up some of the stuff that was going on there it's just wow man marvel jesus christ <laughs> Yeah, when when they also like blaming DC Rebirth for something as well. Like I I was I was watching um the artist Shane Davis talking about it, something about uh returns or something. Yeah, it was something books. like 
Yeah, there was yeah. There, there was a lot of really crazy stuff that was going on there. Uh, what was another thing someone said? I think I think it was Dan Slott who said something to the effect of in a in defense of artists in the comic industry being like, you know, artists are important and they deserve more respect. You can sell a comic with no written dialogue and it can still make sense and you can still sell that, but you can't sell a comic with no art because then it's just a book. <laughs> <laughs> they're like they're like half the lifeblood of your industry. Why? What? Why would you say these things about? Uh, I die. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> just such, such crazy out of touchness. And again, you know, like the throwing diversity under the bus and everything, and being like, yeah, you know, people, uh, p- p- people hate all these characters, so we, uh, so we're not going to do them anymore. I'm like, okay, so you're kind of implying your fan base is racist or sexist or doesn't want them, and so you're not going to do it anymore. I don't know if you know this, guys. Diversity isn't a hat you just get to take on and off when it suits you. The way you're saying this is basically like, okay, so now, like, wh- wh- why should any, like, you know, self-respecting woman or anyone else want to read your stuff anymore? If you're like, yeah, we didn't really care about that, we're just, we're just going to turn it on and off. Yeah, that's not how you get fans. That's no. not how you get people to buy your books. <laughs> no, that's really, that's really messed up. I think, uh, what was it, another creator uh, basically gave her two cents on the whole thing and said, yeah, you know, legacy of characters is important. People do want to read the characters that they like and everything it all kind of depends on h- how they leave them is the thing if you want to preserve the legacy and yeah it is kind of shitty to have the hulk be killed and be replaced by someone new because it's like yeah you know maybe you don't want to follow that legacy anymore if that's the way they left it the thing that gets me and this this wasn't from any creators or even from marvel themselves this was from the fan perspective and i don't really understand this and maybe you can give me some pointers on this a lot of fans you know attributed the problem that marvel is in right now to the whole hydra captain america thing and i'm like but why though that's one of the best stories they're doing it's a story (laughs) i genuinely want to follow but like that that's like their gotcha thing for like you know why they're in trouble where it's like oh you changed all your characters and you made captain america into a nazi i'm like yeah but it was actually a really good story though is it just because it's also part of a bigger event it's also part of a bigger change and it's because, like, you know, it's forcing people, if they want to keep up with it, to read books they don't normally read. I'm guessing that's why. <laughs> I Yeah, it, it's really quite weird. I, I guess that's maybe partly the reason, but also it's, I guess, that things, oh, I don't like seeing change. I, 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 this is different. It's, ve- it's very, very strange, but yeah, I mean... Wow, Marvel! I, I, like, I'm a lifelong comic reader. I love these characters. I love these franchises. I'll, of course, want to stick up for them and stick up for the industry, which has made you and me able to thrive and you know make these channels and make these podcasts and everything. But goddamn, they could not have said more things wrong in this and just more things I disagree with. And I think you took the words right out of my mouth, Matt. Out of touch is where they are. Yeah, it. I just couldn't believe what they were saying in 2016. If they're saying that in like. 1962 yeah like you'd be like yeah yeah fight the power marvel (laughs) yeah but now it's just like god it's i I think they need a regime change is what they need they need some new blood if this is what they're talking and this is what they're saying right now just not a not a fan of it maybe maybe things will course correct after secret wars maybe generations is what they need to put the genie back in the bottle but as it stands right now just god damn it yeah, it's just a shame. If if one good thing came from the retailer summit, I looked very hard to try and find one good thing that I could mention. Uh, remember we talked uh, many episodes back about them changing their policy on digital codes with print versions? Yep. They're bringing the digital codes back. Yay, I guess. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, you... I, I've never used them. Like I've got I've got like a bunch of Marvel ones that still have their digital co- so, codes still in there. <laughs> I mean, I read a lot on digital, so I don't really do the physical thing, but if I did, yeah. I would like that. But again, this seems like a two steps forward, one step back. Things we're like, yeah, you know, all, all these books you like, we think are shit. And we're going to, you know, kind of pull back on them now and everything. But you get your digital codes now, at least, for, you know, the artists who we don't want to push and who aren't superstars. You can read them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It seems... I, 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 get, I get the incentive and everything. You get basically the same comic for free. Yeah, everyone likes that. You should have that. It's how they used to do it, but now they don't anymore. Very, very, very weird. I'm sure we'll be talking about this for a long time to come, but that's just... That that was the biggest piece of news, the Marvel Summit thing, and they... Wow, I, do, I don't even have words. 
Yeah, it's just some insane stuff happening. <laughs> yeah, I, I am genuinely at a loss here. And, you know, I, I think it shows that Marvel themselves are kind of at a loss right now. Yeah, and as you just said before, they need a regime change or something. They need they need something to shake them up. Like, I mean, obviously, they're never going to go bankrupt. They're never going to go away. They're an arm of a huge multi-million dollar media conglomerate. Same with DC. They'll never go away, but they could become a shadow of their former selves. Yeah. Without some much-needed change. And I mean, really, it's like, you know, there there are good books there. There's good stories being told, obviously. You know, Daredevil, yeah. Thor, everything else. You know, uh, uh, Star-Lord, which you're loving right now. Yeah, Star-Lord's great. Kingpin. They, I mean, they need to double down on what works, and they really mm -hmm. need to see what's making the waves there. And maybe change the way they do business. Like, again, I'm no economist and everything, but there was definitely a lot of arguments and talks going on there that I will freely admit I didn't fully understand about, you know, the uh, the open market versus the digital markets and, you know, the uh, brick and mortar uh, and publishing uh, paradigms that Marvel has been in for all these years that's kind of changing and shifting. And maybe they need to change and shift what they consider to be a success. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So that's that, everybody. I'm sure we'll be talking more about this as time goes on. I'm sure there'll be plenty of stuff coming out of this. But uh, there's a, there's kind of some sad news to end this one on. And, you know, old man Marvel opened their mouth and seem a little out of touch. <laughs> Who would have knew? Pissing off fans, pissing off creators. Just, yeah. But, hey, you got your codes back, so there's one thing. <laughs> yeah, the one thing right, ten things wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and with that, let's move on over to what we read this week. And admittedly, this was a really light week, wasn't it, Matt? Yeah, and this is our first week back talking about comics fully. Fully, fully, completely. And we picked a fourth uh, week in a month where there's damn near almost <laughs> nothing to talk about. But I'll let you go first, Matt. Yeah, I, I got lucky though because I so I like knew there was a week coming, so I like left a couple of comics for this week. Um, but the first comic I read this week was uh, in Humans Prime issue one. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, so this uh, was it's sort of like the uh, I don't know what you'd call it, like the the issue between series. Uh, is is this a sampler showing you what you can expect? No, it's not. It, it's an actual an actual issue you probably would have to read okay. to understand what's going on. Because X-Men um, Prime, from also <laughs> from this week, was just a sampler. It was like, hey, here's stories you can read in the future if yeah. you are so inclined. It, it was just previews 2017. Yep. Um, yeah, so in Humans Prime, this fin dovetails off of the Uncanny Human series, which ended last week. And it just sort of sets up the stuff that's going to be happening in Royals and... Uh, I don't know however many in humans books they're going to do the Black Bolt one, all them sort right. of things. And uh, we see Maximus get sent into space, into a space prison deep inside space. We don't know where, though, but he's he's basically gone off to be left for another writer to use later on. Uh, we get the Inhumans dissolve the royal family. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, so they're not going to have... Because as Medusa puts it, the having royal sort of... Uh, disassociated them with the normal inhuman people, the blue collar inhumans. Mm, of course, of course. Um, so she dissolves that, and she's no longer queen. She, uh, I think, she elects ISO as sort of like the head of state. Yeah, yeah. That that happened like near the end of uh, Inhumans versus X Men. She had was yeah. forced to advocate the throne. Yeah, and it's just them sort of figuring out what's next. What do we do next? And what they do next is Crystal ends up meeting Marvel Boy. Oh. Uh, who I'm not sure which one it is because there's been a couple. I think it might be the the uh, one named Nova, uh, which I think Grant Morrison created. Interesting. Um, and he sort of puts the idea in, in Crystal's head that maybe they should go to space. <laughs> Let's go to space. I'm, I'm the best at space. Lots of cool shit's happening in space. Space is really happening that, right now. That, that's pretty much what he says. He says, let's go to space and be cool. <laughs> let's let's go to space, and it has nothing to do with the fact that we're getting a new TV show soon, which will probably <laughs> be based in space. <laughs> Look, it's just saying, you know, we did the Earth thing. It had its chance. But seriously, let's go back to space for reasons. You have reasons. <laughs> let's, let's be a cosmic book again. <laughs> yeah. 
look, we had a big divorce with the X-Men. They won the Earth in the settlement. <laughs> we got to go to space. Yeah, but we're dividing the universe in half. <laughs> By the end of this, one of us was going to space, and I guess we're the ones who got to go to space. <laughs> so space it is. Yeah, but yeah, it was a really cool book. I really liked it. Well, there you go. That's good. I got to catch up on Inhumans. I like the Inhumans. I like to kind of be the devil's advocate for the Inhumans, and I think you agree too, Matt, where it's like, look, hey, when they were basically just being X-Men, they were telling better stories than the X-Men, and now that they're back being cosmic again, I want to check them out being cosmic again. Yeah, they're really great. And the thing is, this series, like, all you'd need to read is maybe the like the, the last arc of Uncanny Inhumans to fully understand what's going on. Well, that's good. Yeah, uh, Charles Soule did a really good job on that book. Oh, that's nice. So uh, I guess moving on from Marvel back to DC, we had Justice League of America issue number three this week. Did you read this one, Matt? I did, yes. Can you tell me what happened in this one? I'm still kind of confused. <laughs> so Havoc kind of went round to all the other neighboring nations and said, hey, join me or I'll kill you. Yeah, to all the other ruinous <laughs> states. <laughs> and they, they, they joined him. And They're like, well, you're a the, trustworthy uh, villain in armor with crackling you electricity. You seem pretty trustworthy. Yeah, you you seem got a pretty big axe, normal. sure. You know, our, our countries aren't getting much better without you. Let's do it. You know, let's roll the dice on this guy. <laughs> and the the JLA or what was left of the JLA had to sort of decide what to do. And yeah, they met up with the resistance. And the the thing I really liked about it is that there's a different. There's a difference between the Justice League and the JLA. The Justice League, they just run into any country yeah. and hit, hit shit and everything, whereas the JLA seem to come into the country and then ask the people how they can help. It, it is different. Batman's worried about causing an international incident, but I like he's worried about causing an international incident and yet still fights with the rebels to break down the front <laughs> door of the governmental offices. And I'm like, well, I guess you mustn't have cared that much, Batman. <laughs> Yeah, still still fights Lord Havoc, who's technically the president of all these states. <laughs> Furthermore, answer me this question, Matt. If the Justice League of America is supposed to be an underground stealth version of the Justice League that Batman can keep in his back pocket, won't toppling an entire nation eventually get the attention of Superman and Wonder Woman and the rest of the Justice League? And once they find out, won't they be like, hey, Batman, what the fuck? Uh, he'll, he'll cover it up, Wayne. He would say it's like an oil spill. <laughs> <laughs> he'll throw some smoke down. I was never here. <laughs> or, oh no, my mind was being controlled by a villain. Oh, did you guys save me? Thanks, Superman and Wonder Woman. You you did great. Hey, hey, you guys, get get out of here. Get out of here, you other heroes. I'll call you. <laughs> It's like, who are these guys? Who's that guy who, who, who's named Ray, but is also named The Ray? Yeah, really, which is a little confusing. Your superhero name is your real name. I'm not The Bruce. <laughs> Although he thinks in his head, hey, that'd be a great name for a sidekick. I'm going to call you The Bruce. <laughs> so yeah, that was Justice League of America. It's fine, but this was a really needlessly complicated issue that basically boiled down to everyone punching each other. Yeah. Uh, what else did you have this week, Matt? Um, I had Batgirl Annual Issue 1. Oh, yes, which uh, this was a Supergirl Batgirl team up, wasn't it? Yeah, this was the prelude to Supergirl Issue 9, which I think is out next week or the week after. And um, it's Supergirl breaking into a black site Cadmus facility with the help of Batgirl to get uh, out, I think her name is gale and i actually looked it up just to make sure it was her she's an old supergirl villain named sai mm. which i thought was really cool they're bringing back all these old villains and everything and the reason she did that was because uh gale has the key to the phantom zone in oh, her head oh, oh shit. and that allows her to telepathically talk with um Supergirl in Kryptonian and everything, and she's got to get to the Phantom Zone because someone's there that can fix her. And I think that someone's like the Phantom King or something. Ah, yes, I think I saw him in solicitations hanging out. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, she she escapes the prison and disappears somewhere, and Supergirl and Batgirl don't really know where. Hmm. Sounds fun. Yeah, it was, a nice, it was a really cool book. It was just them just sort of teaming up, hanging out, stuff like that. Always good. I like they fix the Batman Superman friendship. I like they're fixing the Batgirl Supergirl friendship. Yeah. Yep. 
nice, uh, nice, fun, good direction there. Uh, I had Till Death Do Us Part 3, which was Deadpool and the Mercs for Money. Wow, was this a disposable middle chapter of this Deadpool event. Really? Oh, God, yeah. It's, you know, all of Deadpool's loser friends, Machine Man, Domino, Gorilla Man, Hit Monkey, Negasonic Teenage Warhead, the, Me- <laughs> the Mexican Deadpool Massacre, being sent on a mission by Deadpool who's busy with Spider-Man trying to solve the problem of the event. So it's basically just them fighting monsters in Rockefeller Center. <laughs> it's a very, very forgettable middle chapter. Although they do have kind of a funny joke in there where they're talking about monsters, and they're like, hey, so the Monster Queen can control all monsters, right? Wouldn't some of us technically constitute as monsters? What is what is the definition of monster? <laughs> I, I mean, we're mutants, and people consider us to be monsters all over the world. Gorilla Man was magically turned into a gorilla, so is he a monster? <laughs> what is what? <laughs> yeah, what is going on? Oh, and then uh, then Morbius the Living Vampire showed up for a second, too. He had a fun cameo, which I liked. It's, a, it's always nice to see what Morbius is up to. Yeah, that's cool. Living in the sewers, working with the monsters. That's about it. <laughs> that's his life. That's what he does now. Yeah, that's what he does. Yeah, that's what he does. What uh, what, what else did you have, Matt? Uh, I, I actually read some of the Hanna-Barbera crossovers. Did you now? I downloaded them but didn't read them. <laughs> Was gonna yeah, you, you gotta read them. You gotta at least read. I I only read three of the four. I didn't read the Suicide Squad one. Um, I read the Green Lantern Space Ghost, the oh, Adam yes. Adam Strange, uh, Future Quest, and the Booster Gold Flintstones one. That one looked fun. Future Quest Flintstones. I'm not gonna lie. They they, they were all really good. They and they were all like the classic crossover uh sort of setup you know one of the heroes comes over into the other universe they got to work a way to get get over to the other universe now and everything it was really fun and the adam strange one actually connects to the death of hawkman interesting because at the end of that event um adam strange is like sent through like space time continuum and we don't know where he's gone and he actually ends up in the future quest um universe yeah, he seems a good uh, fit for of that because he's like a sci-fi yeah. super scientist, and so is Doctor Quest. Yeah, and that, that's basically what it is: is them trying to work a way to get uh, um, the Zeta tube open for uh, Adam Strange, and it's them fighting fighting monsters, giant snakes, and stuff like that in the in the jungle. It's pretty fun. Uh, the Space Ghost one was like usual Green Lantern book. They help out a planet and whatnot sort of help each other they fight for a little bit because they don't know who's who and whatnot and at one Uh, point uh, at one point space ghost gets the ring and uh hal gets the bands um hal actually does wear a a set of bands in there as well yeah nice Uh, but i was really hoping they'd be like hey i was a dc property once with space ghost yeah yeah that'd be funny wouldn't it and also we get his villains don't we we get brack yeah, yeah, we get some of these villains. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That's good. Now, see, the thing that disappoints me about a Space Ghost team-up is that it's not Space Ghost coast-to-coast, so Green Lantern doesn't get to sit down <laughs> for an interview segment. Yeah, there's just Harvey Birdman there. Oh, B- Birdman was in the um, in the Adam Strange one, and Adam Strange thought he was Hawkman. Oh, see, man, we were joking about this. Why has that not been a crossover? I'm glad they made reference to that. Yeah, because he, like, sees him up in the sky, and he's like, is that Hawkman? Hawkman just died. Is that Hawkman? <laughs> Harvey Birdman meets Hawkman is so obvious. Why have they never done this now that they're doing these crossovers? I know. I hope they, like, do more in the past. But um, the the really interesting one was the, the Flintstones Booster Gold one, because it's it was just usually Booster Gold inadvertently saving the past and future. Yeah. But um, all of these books came with backup stories, oh. uh, in that were like smaller crossovers like we had a batman top cat crossover oh shit um there was a i can't remember what one was in the green lantern one i'm blanking on but the one in the uh the flintstones one was a jetsons prelude to the jetsons comics that's coming out it's written by jimmy palmiati oh nice Uh, i'm probably going to be picking up this book this was a really cool story like a lot of people thought they were going to like make the jetsons all gritty and dark and everything but he didn't he just made them the jetsons um and but what was really cool is they made uh you know rosie the robot yes uh they they talked about her origin in this 
and it as it turns out jimmy's is doing the origin as rosie is the consciousness of um who's the father in the jetsons what's his name george george it's his mother mother really wow yeah her conscious gets downloaded into a robot and becomes rosie the robot ain't that some shit man leave it to Pagliotti to be like funny and insightful and kind of tragic all at the same time yeah it was really great i really liked it i might actually pick up the book now well fuck now i gotta pick it up <laughs> thanks matt for recommending me a book i gotta start reading now <laughs> Well, that's good. I'm glad you liked that one. I was definitely going to check out some of those Hanna-Barbera ones. This was definitely the week for it with so few other books going on. They're just like, hey, you know what? Yeah. Let's throw some Hanna-Barbera crossovers in there. People might be more willing to pick them up this week, and they were right. Yeah, they were really good. That's good. Uh, what else did I have this week? Ooh, a big Titans book this week. It was a uh, Titans annual number one that actually saw the Titans crossing over with the Justice League. Did you read this? I did read this, yes. Wasn't this a fun one? It was. It was really fun. Basically, the two teams wake up in a trapped room. They don't know how to get out, and the whole thing is based around paranoia of can they trust each other? Who, who, who is who? Do they even know that they're even human? Are they elaborate robots? It's quite well done. Yeah, especially with like Batman there. He's like, I don't trust anyone. What's going on? Also showing that while the you know Justice League is a team of peers, the Titans are family and friends, and they believe each other. Yeah, almost like the old DC universe. I know, right? Isn't that nice? Isn't that a really good feeling? Yeah. They uh, they brought back the key to be a villain too, and I love the key. If I was to have a stable of D list DC villains, the key is definitely in there. <laughs> he's like d1 <laughs> oh god yeah he is and i like the fact that they keep his origin exactly the same oh yeah i was a drug chemist for intergang but i got high on my own supply way too much <laughs> and i expanded my mind to see worlds beyond worlds now i'm obsessed with doors and keys man <laughs> he's basically a functioning crack addict <laughs> yes he looks like a crack addict too doesn't he he do he, he does yeah <laughs> i mean he was working for someone else too how much money you bet the mysterious villain he was working for was paying him in rocks <laughs> hey man i kidnapped the justice league i'll put him in a weird trap room but i gotta do it for some rocks man i need, I need at least three rocks <laughs> and he never got his rocks did he no i i thought it was funny too in this comic everyone was jockeying to like take control of the situation and really saw the pecking order begin to form because at first it's just the two flashes Aquaman and Nightwing, and Aquaman's like, well, as the senior Justice Leaguer here, I think I should take control of the situation. And everyone being like, well, Nightwing's our leader on the Titans, so I kind of want to listen to Nightwing. And then Batman comes out and says, everyone shut the fuck up, you're going to listen to me. Because <laughs> I'm Batman. And I like that's how the pecking order works here when all these teams are together. <laughs> Oh, hey, as someone who read Wonder Woman a lot in the Finch years, too, but then quit, what did you think of the particular uh, focus they gave both Donna and Wonder Woman in this book? I, I'm intrigued. I know that obviously it's going to be completely different to what they did in the New 52. Um, so I'm glad there, but I'm interested to see what they're going to do because Batman makes a point to saying that Donna Troy isn't, she's not right. Yeah, Something's not right about her. She's not even human. Yeah, so I imagine that's going to get uh, very interesting scene. I don't know if, whether that's going to be in the Wonder Woman book because I've seen like solicitations and they're still in the, in on that truth storyline. Yeah. it's. Uh, I thought it was interesting too. I got a chuckle out of it and I'm sure you did too. Wonder Woman regaling everyone else with Donna's backstory. And I, all I could think to myself is, hey, Wonder Woman, what's your backstory right now? Because <laughs> you don't even know in your own book. <laughs> well, you see, if you say that's like a trigger word to her, she'll just like fall to the ground and just go insane yeah, don't just ask like, me about my origins <laughs> yeah how's the mascara diana <laughs> it's a touchy subject shut up <laughs> it's like i'm seeing life in two timelines right now i don't, I don't even know <laughs> I, I gotta get back on wonder woman and i gotta get back on aquaman those books kind of fell by the wayside on my channel but i think I think those come out again this week, so I'll have at least four saved up. I'm thinking of doing, like, a comic catch-up or something, or, like, you know, uh, I'm thinking of a catchy title for it. Uh, comic catch-up, or what else was I going to say? Uh, the story so far. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wonder Woman's been really great. They just introduced the um, the old villain Doctor Cyber. Ooh, yeah, I remember that. That was that was right when I quit. They were talking to a hologram woman, and I'm like, is that Doctor Cyber? Yeah, they introduced it. They did a really good job of introducing her as well. That's cool. I hope they bring back Doctor Psycho at some point, just because I love that there's a villain in DC Comics called Doctor Psycho. <laughs> and that he's a little dwarf Tony Stark who hates women. I like that. We need that character. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you mean to tell me you can't do anything with that character in this day and age? You can't find some sort of funny, like, uh, some funny little gag for him to do? Oh, well. Uh, what else did you have this week, Matt? Um, I had... Uh, what did I have? I had Darth Maul issue two. Oh yes, I read this too, actually. I forgot I read this. Yeah, this was a pretty good book. I read this on the plane ride back. Yeah, Cad Bane shows up. Yes, and Aurora Singh and all those other Clone Wars bounty hunters show up in here, making it a really cool team-up vehicle. Yeah, they're, they're like part of uh, Maul's little cadre of people uh, who infiltrate this auction house to get the the Padawan who more wants to i guess murder <laughs> yeah to prove that he's a big dick sith lord i like that all these characters working together who we know are untrustworthy and who we know constantly backstab it's like a race to see who will backstab who first <laughs> yeah it's like it's gonna be bane is it gonna is it gonna be aura seeing is it gonna be the paddle one <laughs> Man, they do some horrible stuff to a droid in this issue, don't they? Where it's like, oh no, these yeah. guys can feel pain and have emotions. Yeah, they're like pulling out its eyes and everything. And, oh, that's great. We will answer our questions. Oh, another big thing, I'm sure as you know, fans of Rebels, you and I noticed this, Matt. We get a flashback to Maul early on in his training, and they go to that weird temple place from Rebels. Yeah, they go to Malachor. They do, and we get the backstory of that place saying that this is where the Jedi basically slew the Sith by the hundreds and killed them, and we even get to see a bunch of those, like, ancient cross lightsabers. Yeah, that was really cool. That was oh, my really, God. That was an amazing piece of connective tissue, because if you never read Rebels, you wouldn't, or if you never watched Rebels, you wouldn't even know what they were referencing. Yeah, but you still understand it as well. Absolutely. That's Could... really good. Yeah, and then when if you saw Rebels and saw that, you'd be like, hey, that was in Darth Maul. Yeah, that's excellent connective tissue. That's really well done. I hope they keep doing that because that basically means you got to read every comic now because that's how rewarding it's going to be. <laughs> that's like a real reward and treat for paying attention to everything and reading everything. And yeah. They didn't even make a big deal about it either. They just put it in there. No. Yeah, it was like middle of the comic, not at the end or anything. Yeah, that like that could have been such a huge thing, but they're like, yeah, here it is. Here's uh, here's the origins of this place. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Uh, speaking of space and speaking of bad guys, I had Thanos number five this week. Oh, I kind of fell off in that series. Yeah, it's it's good. I mean, it's it's it depends how much you like Marvel Cosmic and how much you like a lot of these characters. Because even though the book is called Thanos, the bulk of the heavy heavy lifting is his thun say, uh, Thane and his crew trying to kill Thanos. Yeah, yeah. Although here's the crazy thing: Thane gets his like secret weapon. He gets his ace in the hole this issue, and it turns out to be the Phoenix Force. Oh, really? Yes, he found where the Phoenix Force was hiding out, which we discover it was actually stolen by Terax the Tamer, a.k.a. one of Thanos's, like, you know, a personal guard during the Hickman Avengers and also a former Herald of Galactus. Oh, shit. I, I really should pick this book up now, then. <laughs> it, it just went up a notch. And it's funny, too, Thane kind of comes a villain in his own right this issue because he's been lying to his team. He's like, yeah, 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 we got to go on to Terax's ship. We got to see a guy who he's keeping held captive. You know, he, he, he's he got the backdoor information that'll help us kill Thanos once and for all. But he was totally lying to his team. What he wanted was the Phoenix Force because Lady Death told him to go get it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so Lady Death is the villain, but Thanos is the villain. Everyone is the villain in this book. There are no good people. <laughs> <laughs> everybody's bad and i love it Ah, uh, that's great so yeah that uh that was thanos so what else did you have this week matt um that's about it i i've still got books to read so oh, i haven't I... had a chance to look at them oh have you not read old man logan or infamous iron man yet no no i've been spacing them out because there were so few books i've been spacing them out to cover me for the rest of the week uh, i did the same i have to do a video for infamous iron man tonight and that's about it <laughs> 
Yeah, I I, I want to get back on Old Man Logan, um, but I don't know when it, it starts the new arc or what's going on or we're, we're what's kind, happening. And we're kind of starting it right now. This this was like a transitional issue between the last arc and the beginning of the new one. So, w- when was the last time you stopped reading? Did you read to the end of the Brood story? Oh, um, I read when he was in he was in that town that was from his his future. Oh, wow. I think. Oh wow! So and he met, and he met his wife who was like a little kid. It, oh, was, it was a while ago. <laughs> oh my, that has been a while ago. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, you're a couple storylines behind, but I'll start you off with at least where we are now. So, all right, they did a really weird mind bendy one, where old man Logan went into space to help out Alpha Flight. Yep. But you didn't know if it was the past or the future. The ship was under attack by brood aliens. They kind of riffed on uh, on the movie Aliens is what they did, where he's like, you know, stalking these monsters in a ship, but oh, who's more dangerous, the alien or Logan? Then Logan starts having these weird flashes to the future he left behind, right? To, like, the wasteland. Yeah. And he starts freaking out about all the people he left behind, particularly the Hulk baby, uh, Bruce Jr. there that he picked up from uh, Papa Banner at the end of the original Old Man Logan story. Yep. And Logan sees this horrible future where that baby grows up without him and becomes the warlord of the Wasteland who takes over all of the Wasteland and is even worse than the supervillains. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and he starts seeing these horrible images of the warlord of the wasteland saying, you know, you did this, Logan. You left me behind. You know, you left me to fend for myself. And this is what I became. This is all your fault. Eventually, Wolverine defeats the brood, but he tells Gene, I gotta go back. He, he becomes Samurai Jack. I gotta go back. I gotta go back to the future. <laughs> I gotta do it. And everyone tells him that's a terrible idea. Your future might not even exist anymore. There's no way to do it. Just get comfortable with yourself here. And he goes to Doctor Strange, and he goes to Emma Frost, and he goes to, like, basically everyone he can think of to try and send him back. And when no one will do it, he decides to take matters into his own hands. And this is the last two issues where he's like, look, I'm going to break into a black site shield prison and bust out uh, Asmodeus, a D-list Doctor Strange villain who I know sent Hawkeye into the medieval past one time. Oh, shit. <laughs> he does that, and it's hilarious. The spell that Asmodeus sets up for him is basically the plot of Days of Future Past, where it's like, look, I'll give you this medallion. It will give you four days' time. It will blast your consciousness back into your body at another time, and then you can do what you got to do before coming back, put your affairs in order. But, oh, the thing he doesn't tell him is that, oh, well, your conscience is gone. Your body is undefended. Oh, Jesus. (laughs) And then he further lies to him because Wolverine wakes up, and this is the end of this newest issue, he didn't get sent back to the future at all. He got sent back to his past, to the War of 1812, in fact, where he was part of the Canadian military fighting the Americans. Oh, my God. <laughs> and it's like, fuck. And then the next issue, like the cover that we've seen, it's Wolverine in his original costume fighting the Hulk again. And it's like, oh, is Wolverine taking a walking tour of his life now? Oh, that's interesting. That's very interesting, because he's lived a very long, very rich existence, and it would be a fitting way to end the book, especially if this is Lemire's final run, as he says it is. Oh, wow. Yeah. Some shit, huh? Yeah, I I think I'm probably going to start picking that book back up. (laughs) It's very solid. It's one of the best things at Marvel right now. Like, again, took a big steamy shit on, you know, the way Marvel's running their company. But the books and the creators, and yes, the artists are still very good when they are good. Yeah. So, you know, hey, the cream rises to the top, as they say. (laughs) Uh, Infamous Iron Man, also pretty good. Doctor Doom continuing going around being Doctor Man Iron Doom. Dr. Man Iron Doom. Dr. Man Iron Doom, that's his new... They wanted that to be the title of the book, but they're like, no, we can't do that. <laughs> it's uh, it's really solid, and it actually ends with Riri Williams finally catching wind of uh, Dr. Doom running around as Iron Man. Oh, it's about fucking time. Yeah, it took long enough. She's, she, her mom's like, Riri, dinner time. And then she's watching the news, and she sees that. It's like, I'll grab something on the way, Mom. <laughs> This looks like something I should probably go deal with. Uh, did, did we get to see any more of the maker? 
Uh, yes, although they are playing with the idea where they're like, no, no, it's Reed, it's really Reed. No, it's not, it's the maker. Oh, really? So they, they're trying to make you think that, that it's actual Reed Richards? Well, I wonder if, like, he actually is going to come back. Wouldn't that be some shit? You know, I mean, hey, Bendis basically seems to have free reign to do whatever he wants with the Fantastic Four characters. I think it would be fitting if Reed shows up, beats the Maker, and then robs uh, Doctor Doom of his chance to beat the Maker. (laughs) (laughs) But then again, I also kind of love the idea of it being the Maker, because now here is a good Doctor Doom fighting an evil Reed Richards. Yeah, it's the role reversals the ultimate role reversal and especially the fact that the maker seems to be stooping his mom right now (laughs) (laughs) so he's extra evil (laughs) he's extra evil and that'll extra piss him off (laughs) also hey this issue uh references what's going on in uh captain america steve rogers because doom there's a moment where shield comes to try and get him again and doom's like i'll only talk to maria hill i only want to talk to maria hill she's the only one of you i respect and Sharon Carter's like, yeah, she's gone now. I'm I'm the boss now. You got to talk to me. And he's like, nope, not having it. And then he disappears. Oh. <laughs> I, I like that idea that Dr. Doom is morally complex and Maria Hill is morally complex and he's the only one he's, she, he's actually willing to talk to. <laughs> well, see, she's, she's in that gray area. She, she's willing to do what she, what she needs to do to, do, to get uh, results. And so's Doom, so. Yeah fascinating character dynamic between the two they hate each other but they understand and respect each other yeah it's pretty good so yeah there you go that's that's what we read this week guys should we take a look to help pad out time i mean to continue giving you a good show on uh, what's coming out this week that you can buy <laughs> and, th- and this week this coming week is just a normal week yep just a normal week we got some aquaman number 20 we got batman number 20 the continuation of i am bane cyborg number 11 somebody's reading that (laughs) i don't know who yeah hey if you're reading cyborg tell us down in the comment section how's it doing it's good Yeah, what's it about (laughs) yeah yeah tell us all about i will happily read that uh we got deathstroke number 16 still digging what that book is doing uh oh you got your fall of captain adam number four of six Ooh, yeah Green Arrow number 20, loving what they're doing with Green Arrow right now that they brought Roy yeah. back into it and they're reestablishing their relationship. That's some good shit. Yeah, so good. You got Injustice Ground Zero's number nine. Is that done yet or what's the deal with it, that? It, it, it's done. I've been, I was reading it digitally and that's the um, physical, physical copy. So it, it's done and thank God it's done. There you go. Justice League number 18 that I'm still not reading and still don't care. Nightwing number 18, that's a good story. We got Deathwing, that's a lot of fun. And Professor Pig, I'm liking that. Cool. Superman number 20, kickoff of a brand new arc. Awesome, yeah, it's Fallout from Superman Reborn. Yeah, I can't wait for that. One of the best Superman stories I've read in a very long time. <laughs> Superman's back and it's really good. Uh, over at Marvel, we got all new Wolverine number 19. I gotta catch up on that. Is what well, I now would be the best time. Number 19 is the start of a new story. Cool. I have all the other ones on my pad. I was going to read it in my travels, but I never got around to it. Uh, Avengers number six. Man, Avengers is coming out really, really infrequently. We have so many Avengers books, but they come out on weird schedules. Yeah, especially this main one. It comes out on a really weird schedule. When was the last time we had one of these, like, a month and a half ago? Something like that. I mean, it's Mike Del Mundo, so maybe he needs, like, extra time to make the art really nice. Yeah, and he does. He really does. It's a beautiful looking book. I mean, whatever you want to say about the story, at least it looks really good. Uh, We got Mm. Champions number seven. We got, ooh, Daredevil by Ed Brubaker, Omnibus uh, Hardcover Volume 1 in new printing for $100. There you go. You can buy me and Joel each one of them. It's a beautiful (laughs) fucking book. Uh, Iron Fist number two. I didn't read Iron Fist number one. I was not very interested in it. I I did. They tried to make it like the TV show and... It didn't work because Iron Fist is like the name, the comic name is literally the only thing that it has to do with Iron Fist. <laughs> Good job, guys. I I actually finally got to the last episode of Iron Fist this week. We'll have to talk about that on Cape TV. What yeah. I thought about it. I have complicated feelings about it. <laughs> I'm sure everyone does. <laughs> yeah, very complicated feelings. Spider-Man number 15. Oh, I'm sorry, Miles. You lost me in your crossover. I'm really sorry. I, I I I might not be reading you anymore. I'm so sorry, Miles. 
I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. You're really good in Champions. I'll say that much. Uh, Spider-Man Deadpool, which is part four of Till Death Do Us Part. You got Star Wars number 30. Is that Ooh, a thing? Oh, yeah. Yep. Cool. And then the Star Wars Rogue One adaptation, one of six. That's yeah, I, I don't read them because they're just the movies. They're just the movies. Uh, we got Uncanny Avengers number 22. Now, there's a good Avengers book. There's an Avengers book I'm all about. And uh, we got Royals number one, and we got X-Men Gold number one coming out in the same week. Cool. I'm, I'm going to give all the X-Men books a try, at, le- at least the number ones, just to see where they're at. I, I, I'm not sure if I've mentioned this elsewhere, but I'll mention it here. I'm picking and choosing my X-Men books dependent on writers because the way i see it the x-men books will never be back to prominence until they get the movie rights dealt with so i'm gonna read astonishing x-men because i like charles soul i'm gonna read weapon x because i like greg pack and i'm gonna read cable because i like james robinson not because they're x-men books yeah uh, i'm gonna do that after issue one i'm gonna read all the issue ones and we're like okay what am i gonna read from now on because that's really all uh, X-Men Prime was from this week. It's just a sampler, like, hey, here's some stories it was. you should be reading. It, it, was, it was horrible. It was a horrible sampler. Yeah. It, it, did, it did its job, which I commend it for. It did its job at advertising those books. But as if you are just to, like, pick it up, yeah, there's no point. <laughs> and to charge full price for what was basically a preview book. Yeah. That's a little yeah. much. Marvel, get your shit together. <laughs> <laughs> You, you're you're basically now where DC was for the new 52 when every time it was like, DC, get your shit together. Now it's been a total reversal of fortunes, and now it's like, you guys get your shit together. <laughs> and I'm sure maybe in a couple years it'll be reversed again, who knows. Yeah, so, maybe. So there you have it, everyone. Episode number 51 on the books. How you, how you feeling about that? That's pretty good. It's pretty good. We did our show. We're, we promise we'll try and do something interesting for episode 52. Matt and I, we, we're working on some stuff. We got some stuff coming down the pipeline, so be sure to check that out. As always, be sure to like, subscribe, favorite this video. It helps us out a whole bunch. Uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, helping Matt cross his 2K, for helping me cross a threshold. I got a bunch of new followers on Twitter and Instagram ever since I started pimping it out, so I will continue to pimp it out. Yeah, go go follow us on Instagram. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're taking pictures. We're doing stuff with the pictures. Yeah. You can see me walking and, and around. the filters. Yeah, the filters. You can see me walking around Chinatown in Victoria. That's fun. I like that. Uh, <laughs> and talking to statues. <laughs> talking to statues, as I do. That's kind of my thing. I like I uh, hashtagged a bunch of Victoria businesses, so now I have a bunch of Victoria business Instagrams following me. <laughs> I, I do that on on like on like Twitter as well. Like I won't at them or anything. I'll like mention something, and then like a couple of days later, I'll get this person is following you. I'm like, why the fuck are they following? Me? Oh, I mentioned them in a tweet. Yeah, you, you know, <laughs> I don't live there, right? Okay. So uh, yeah, I mean, on that note, I guess we can start bringing the show to a close. As always, thank you for listening. Patrons will be getting this uh, episode, get a chance to listen to it before anyone else. As soon as we're done recording, I'll render that one and put that up for them to listen to. Everyone else, it's Wednesday is at 8 without fail. If you can't get enough podcasting goodness, be sure to head on over to the Comic Multiverse SoundCloud page. Be sure to subscribe on there so you can always be up to date on the Comic Multiverse and Cape TV, which airs on uh, the weekly poll bonus and archive channel whenever that one gets put up. In fact, I gotta edit that one right now, I think. (laughs) So good listening, everybody. We'll be sure to join you again next week. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.